fans of the equatorial wastes of Necromunda, new experimental vehicle designs and squats. Thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing video and today we are looking at the latest release from Forge World, latest vehicle release from Forge World and this is for the Necromunda range. And here we go and this, uh, this is a big old box and this contains the Squat Prospector's Scalvian Explorator. So this is a full resin model that is for the Necromunda game. Uh, from Specialist Games, from Games Workshop. Now, I normally do Horus Heresy stuff, as you know, but I am a fan of the interesting vehicles that Forge World produces, and they are in a bit of a league of their own for the designs they create. And I enjoy resin models, warts and all, and it does allow for experimental designs that otherwise wouldn't make it to market. And I'm particularly interested in this because now we've got all the Horus Heresy range probably complete or largely complete for when we think about all the Legion vehicles and those are migrated to a substantial degree to plastic. The question is well what does Forge World do next? I mean obviously they do like characters and accessory packs but what about the vehicles that they really put themselves on the map with and this is perhaps a direction of travel certainly for the immediate future and we're picking up from the release around this time last year, and that's this fine model here. And this is the Kronos Pattern Iron Crawler, which is a resin plastic hybrid of the Cargo 8 hauler from Necromunda. So two years and two vehicles from Forge World for a Necromunda. Exciting and interesting, I think. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to unbox this kit and we're going to take a look at the parts, we're going to examine the details, see what it's about. I'll also appraise the quality of this. So that's the plan. Right, before we dive in, firstly, just comment on boxes. So this is quite a big box. It's what you might call the short wide box, which um, fits squats perhaps. And to give you an idea, this is uh, the Forge World Large white box that we're familiar with so it's much bigger than that and it kind of has replaced the last of the boil in the bag models as i used to call them and um, so it's good to see forge world properly packaging these as opposed to throwing all the parts in a bag which was a uh, always a little bit hit and miss in terms of protecting the model in transit right anyway that's enough of that Let's go in and see what this is about. Very excited for this. Um, ever since I saw it previewed, I was really interested to like, get my hands on the Scalvian. Right. So we're going to have to move things off shot here because this is a huge box. So we get a tray of resin parts and several bags. Gosh, there's lots, isn't there? So we've got one bag, two bags, two trays of parts, one, two, three bubble wrapped components and there's a large and then we have some instructions and a packing sheet so let's start at the top we'll make this a little bit neater when was this manufactured so this was manufactured all the way back in october so they had these in stock for a bit of time there's uh, currently quite a slow launch on new kits out of forge world which i think is something to do with their warehouse operation their new warehouse and let's take a look at the instructions so get a full color set of instructions with a picture of the explorator on the front we get an exploded diagram showing all different parts. There's quite a lot of bits to this, as you can see. And then a series of diagrams showing how to, well, certainly showing where all the bits go together. And I'm sure I'll have my usual game of not building the kit in the order the instructions suggest. And then we also get some rules as well using this in games of Necromunda, which is quite nice. Uh, I do like that. And this is similar to the Kronos, which also came with a similar sort of set of information. So yeah, you get all this as well. So it's not just a nice model. It's also something that you can play in game. Let's start with these. So we've got some tracks. So this is one of the first kits, so yeah, I'm hoping for a really nicely turned out set of parts. Forge World over the last mm, two to three years have noticeably stepped up their quality game. 
compared to the preceding five or six. And let's see if that, that perception that I have of them continues. So we have some more track parts. Nice to see that these have been well packaged. Now one thing with tracks, resin tracks always uh, can be a little bit fraught. Do they fit? However, also opens up opportunity to do things like track sag as well, which can really add to the character of the model. And if we just look on the Kronos, you can see how I use that very technique on the tracks of that. So resin parts do, or resin kits do bring unique opportunities that plastic kits simply can't offer. Of course, at a price. So we then have these two. So these are the main track assemblies with the, the carrier wheels or the track carrying wheels, I should say. Let's have a look at this. Some slight mold misalignment there to clean up and flash between the wheels. Hmm, overall, very nice. Let's see how the other one looks. So I do like the design on these, these paired bogies perhaps slightly reminiscent of certain World War II tanks, like let's say the Sherman. I believe that is the Iron Head squat symbol. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not a Necromunda player, so if there's a Necromunda lore expert or background expert, please do leave a comment to say what that symbol's about. Again, just a little bit of moldless misalignment to clean up there. Overall, very nice. Very impressive casting gates. Right, let's do... Let's do this bag of big bits because I want to look at the crew module. Wow, look at this beastie. That's a chunky bit of resin, that is. Yeah. <laughs> that looks fantastic. Now this, presumably, which is the, well, the driver's position, or well, the crew position puts me in mind of the crew module of a bath escape, a deep sea submersible where you've got like a titanium sphere or perhaps some special steel sphere to resist the tremendous pressure of deep deaths. And I think that's part of what this kit's about. It's a very protected crew environment for driving around in the nasty zones of Necromunda. So a bit of clean up here and there to do. Slightly squiffy there, so. Generally, I mean, the, the mould separation on this has been very good. That little ridge there will need a bit of reconstruction with perhaps some glue, uh, super glue, or maybe a bit of milliput. But yeah, fine. Need to put that nice and prominently. Right, what else we got in this bag? So this thing, which looks like it's one end of the crew cylinder, um, crew, what would you call it? Occupied cylinder, the crew compartment. Crew compartment, that's it. So I think that might be that. These two, I think are the arms. So the track units on these suspension arms. I think these are the main arms. So some mold slippage to clean up around those. You can see there. And some of that I'll need uh, a bit of reconstruction with milliput. So look at this one. This one's better. But the detailing over the cables is nicely presented. A bit more slippage to clean. Them. I mean, yeah, a bit of cleanup on those. I mean, not too bad though. Half of the course for this sort of model, I'd say. Some more details. Some mold seems to remove there. Bit of a slip to clean up on this one here. That might file out. No, so I think that'll probably need filling. That's that one. Moving on to the second bag. So it looks like more large track components and the remainder of the crew compartment. So crew compartment, this looks... But I don't know if this is a crew compartment. I think it attaches to the forward driver cab. Hmm, very nicely detailed. Like that little call-out panel there. 
So that's, I believe this will be the top side. This will be the underside, I think. So there's a bit of a seam here, which becomes a bit slippy at this end. So yeah, it's not great having a mold slip across those bits there, but now you can see. It will clean out though. Uh, with a scalpel and some flowers, I'll get rid of that, blend it back in. Got this uh, another part, presumably, of the central body of the tank, and uh, perhaps this is intimating that the engines, because these look like a pair of exhausts. Pre I presume these are shims that will be needing removing. You've got the rounded sort of shape there to it as well. So it's an interesting vehicle, this, in its general sort of design, because there's a mixture of the square elements, which you might characterise to be the tracks, but then the crew compartment and driver area is all rounded. So interesting different themes and styles there. So this is a decking that goes on each side of the track compartment. How does this look? Nice, I like the detail there on the deck with the, um, with the grip tread for walking across it. And same on the other side. I'm not sure if these are shims or not, or if they're supposed to be solid. Let me consult the instructions. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so those are shims, so they will need cutting out. Mm. Cool, we're showing off some, inter some details internal to that. So the next part are the four main articulation arms for the track units. And this is sort of hinting at a vehicle that has very considerable terrain crossing capabilities. Puts me in mind a bit of some of the mock-up designs for Mars rovers uh, that NASA has worked with over the last couple of decades. So as well as having a bit of the nautical exploration to it, this vehicle also, I think, is pulling on some design motifs from real-world exploration vehicle, terrestrial vehicle designs for hostile environments. I'll drop a picture in of the NASA rover I'm thinking of, and you'll probably then see what I'm thinking of. So casting-wise, these are going to need a bit of work because they're all a bit slipped, as you can see. Yeah, the whole lot of them are. I mean, they're not terrible slips. I say that looking at them the first time. I mean, I think those will clean out okay. Would have been nice not to have them, although I think there's, there's something of a complex shape to those. It might have made those a bit trickier to cast. And then there's another piece here, which is like a top bar. So those arms are going to go into there, I think, and then into there. Yeah, because those go on the side of the tracks, don't they? Yeah, that's good. Maybe a little bit warped there. I didn't mention it. These two are a bit warped as well. So those are going to need heating up to straighten them out. More tracks. I'm not entirely sure where all these track bits go. Well, this one, is this the front way? I think this is the front part, yeah. I mean, the tracks in all fairness have been... They've all been very nice to cast so far, so... That's, uh, that's one nice thing. So if tracks aren't well cast, so you can, they do take forever to clean up, so I appreciate that. And then the second set, as always with Forge World, you know, wonderful detailing. I also like how the designer has created a different tread design for this vehicle compared to the Kronos, which adds to its character. Right, moving on to the parts tray. So parts tray one, we have, let's see what, we've got some exhausts. Uh, well, I say exhausts or some sort of piping or tube work. There may be exhausts, there may not be. We've got this, which I think is, I'm not sure where that goes, but you can tell it's something to do with the main hull. Again, nice curved sort of designs and a walkway here. You don't often get imperial or imperial sphere vehicles with curved design elements. They tend to be quite square, don't they? 
So this is a nice detachment from that, something different and fresh. A pair of what I presume are gas tanks. So perhaps these are containing either fuel or oxygen, you know, breathable air for the crew. We have this thing here, which looks like a ladder, very thin shims to remove on that. So that's much like the ladder on the uh, Kronos. It'd be interesting to see where that goes. I wonder if it will um, move. I have no idea what these are. You've got some sort of, you've got an arm, a connecting arm, a set of cables. Yeah, I don't know. Quite like how they've done these reinforcement ridges on this cable. So it means that you don't get a shim line running down the cable ribs. That's, I, I like that <laughs> from a modeler's perspective. I don't know what those are, but they're very nicely cast. Then while this is mainly an exploration vehicle, it does have some armament and this little cupola carries what I presume are a pair of heavy stubbers or a twin linked heavy stubber, which is this part here. Got another cylinder, perhaps containing some fuel or life support materials. And that gun is gonna mount there. And then it has this here, which I presume is supposed to be a searchlight or some sort of scanner. Yeah, nice details, beautiful cast. This one circular mounting point, which is gonna go on the head of the driver's compartment. So that will nicely magnetize to rotate if you like doing that sort of thing like me. And now moving on to the final box of components. So these are what we might call the fine details. Right, what we got? On the front of the scalvion, there's this grab hand or manipulator arm. Again, that's very submersible exploration vehicle design. And there's an arm and then the manipulator claws as well. Very nice. The verse seem to take off around that. Again, we've got this sort of ribbed reinforced design, which is going to make cleanup of these cables nice and easy. And some shims to remove on the claws. Love the detail in there with these grips on the inside of the digits. Starting to run out of space now, aren't we? Hmm. Another two widgets, I don't know what they are. They look like some sort of connecting arm somewhere. And then we've got some grab handles, some cabling and a pipe. Hmm. Yeah. All very nice. Decently cast. There's a bit more cleanup to do on those. There's a bit of a seem to take off, it seems, on both of those. But overall, casting quality has been pretty good on this one. All the parts are nice and clean as well. They're not caked in release agent, which is always a good sign. And there's another two of those. So perhaps these somehow are linked to the four larger arms that suspend the track units. A fair bit of cleanup to do on those. Another cylinder. I like these ribs, these braces perhaps that run down the side. It gives the impression that it's an armoured bottle or an armoured cylinder to protect it from bumps and knocks. It's a bit mould slippy, isn't it? Got a little bracket. They all fix. And then the final finest of the fine details. A little set of capacitors. A drum. And uh, what appears to be a towing hook. I always appreciate the inclusion of towing hooks because vehicles get stuck and they need pulling out. Something that looks like a reactor, a cable, perhaps another reactor. These designs are a bit reminiscent of some, I think it was the old Nartus Acteus's engine array. I wonder if they've pulled a similar sort of thought process. Perhaps it's a radioisotope energy reactor. Some cables. Now, are these decently cast? Bit of mold slip, bit of you know, a little bit slippy seamy there. Inside and yeah, a bit more there. So on the outside, that those are good. On the inside, a bit less so. So a bit of a detailed cleanup work to do on those. We looked at that, and then we looked at that. So I think 
that is everything. That's a lot, yeah. So there you have it, the Scalvian Explorator for the Ironhead Squat Prospectors in the game of Necromunda. Absolutely fascinating vehicle design, this. I am really intrigued by it. It's good to see Forge World doing something new in the vehicle department, you know, because that's what generally people think of Forge World as being their party piece. I think this is an absolutely fascinating model really interesting design and i'm very much looking forward to building it in terms of quality everything's nice and cleanly cast so that's good the general casting quality it i'd say is very good there's a fair few bits that are going to need some more intensive cleanup and or filling work to get it right not uncommon on a big resin complicated model like this but overall i'm just fascinated by the design yeah i'm really interested to see where forge world go with this line in the years to come or if you know maybe they're going to do they've done this and the chronos and they're going to go in a new direction again next year who knows anyway i hope you've enjoyed this unboxing video and found it interesting taking a detailed look at all the parts of scalvian as always please do share your thoughts and observations in the comments section i'll be interested to hear those but other than that well it's christmas isn't it uh, so it's the winter holiday in the northern hemisphere so you know if you celebrate christmas happy christmas and i just extend season greetings to you all so yes thank you as ever for watching but other than that i'd just like to say thank you very much for watching i'll speak to you next time and goodbye